Welcome back. I'm Pete, and you're watching the Custom Car Channel. So we're gonna work out a Bobcat today. And it's gonna be awesome. So this one's the Silverado. Maybe you guys can just call me the, the Silverado Man. Hey guys. I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into today. I got an Infinity, and it's a G35. It's a 2006. So the guy, the guy, uh, the customer complaint is, uh, it's smoking out of the hood. So I took a look at it last night, and uh, it's the valve cover gaskets. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, I just figured. Well, against my better judgment, I told the guy to do it, but. I've just figured I'd bring you guys along, and we'll tackle it together. It's a pretty sweet looking car. It does have some other problems, but I'll deal with those later, so... I don't know. I don't even know where to start. I did. This is all I did last night. I just took this off. And then, when I took all that off, that off, I seen all this. So it looks like I gotta take the whole top of the engine off. I don't even know. Well, I suppose. I suppose that it ain't gonna fix itself. Alright. I just hope uh, I can get this car done today. Guess I'm just gonna start taking stuff off until I can see something. Just went and got a little parts tray. So one thing I was kind of surprised. I looked up the parts and they the parts store O'Reilly's they get, they're gonna. They have the, Rylis has the valve cover gaskets on hand, the plenum gaskets and the intake gaskets are, are just one store away and they're going to get them to me today, I just, I can't believe it. There we go. I had to get another part straight. We're going to have one for each side, I guess. So it looks like there's a couple bolts here on this fuel pressure regulator. Looks like we'll take this off. I don't know what it is. Looks like it's a vacuum solenoid for the for something. Well, there's a little bracket right here. It looks like there's some dirt up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get something to blow that off. Probably should have blew it off first, huh? Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so I think we want to blow underneath of it because once we get this off, everything's going to be exposed. Alright, back at her. Maybe I'll get this, this vacuum line off.
Oh, there's another one back here. It looks like there's a little vacuum line there. Oh, I missed one. Yeah, I wonder what we're going to find under here. I think we're going to take the throttle body off because it looks like there's some coolant lines on there. Well, it looks like it's this one, but it might be, I might need a quarter inch drive one. This is a five. Well, we'll just try it. I doubt they're going to send me one of these. I, I, there's two lines, so I think it's going into the coolant. Alright, so I thought them two lines were going on here, but they weren't. They're going onto the, the plenum itself. So the coolant's going through this part. I just hope we don't spill very much. Might be a good idea to see if there's any pressure. And there's no pressure. That looks like some type of red coolant. I'm going to go get a couple cap plugs. So I found a couple of these, and these are the ones that go on like an 8090 jug or a gear oil jug. Yep, that's going to work. Alright, one more line. Alright, kind of looks like we need to take this cover off next. That all just kind of stayed together. Looks like there's another line right here. I think that's a breather line. I think it's hard as a rock. That's kind of hard. So I'm not seeing, are those the intake bolts then right there? Yeah, I think they are. Let me get my bag that I dropped that one a little bit. So there must be one of those right here. Now does this piece come off? It does. She comes right off there. There's another gasket. Well now, now we're talking. Now we're down to, I can see the valve covers now. So, there's a bunch of wires and coils and stuff in the way. So I think maybe I'll start on the passenger side, and I'll try to get you guys closer. Alright guys, I was just looking at this thing, and I think it'd be a wise idea to, you know, get this fuel stuff out of my way. 
So I think if we just, uh, let me see here a minute. So I think if we just unbolt it here, slide it out, there's probably some O-rings in there. I'm going to be careful for spraying out gasoline. That wasn't too bad. And it's just an O-ring. We'll just set that all the way over here. I don't like that wiring harness. Looks like there's a, a bolt right here. That harness is just pretty solid. There must be another bolt. Now there's there's a bolt right down here where my finger is. I think there's another one. Yeah, here's one. We just gotta bend it out of the way a little bit. So looks like there's a little a little doodad clip right here. There we go. So I just squeezed it a little bit. And you'll notice. And there's another one right over here that we're going to have to get out. I got it. Now I can get to this other bolt. Probably with an extension. And a wobble socket. That's still, that's still not workable. God, it's just, it's just too tight. I don't know what they expect. Well, maybe we can sneak it out of there. Now I gotta get that unplugged. Thought I was gonna be able to pull it out a bit. If I can't release the clip, let me get a little pick. I'm gonna have to try to squeeze it with my pliers. I got it. This breather hose is kind of loose. Let's get it out of there and see what that's all about. Maybe kind of loose, but it, I don't know if it's coming off there or not. All right, we got that out of the way. I think the hose is pretty hard. Still not sure. Looks like if we pull this coil up a little bit. I have to grab that one with the players too. And then I just put my I get a screwdriver and then I just pry on it. Yeah. So that's about the easiest way for these. looks like this this must be the phaser activator actuator the phaser actuator hope that don't have to come off I'm gonna get the blow gun and blow it off a little bit more again I'll probably put a rag over that or some tape
I mean, if we had all the valve cover bolts out, well, there's this hose here. Oh, that's hard as a rock, too. That's valve cover to valve cover. Yowzers. It's loose. I think that's a kind of a special molded hose, like a half an inch. It's probably 12 millimeters. Probably gonna have to replace it. I think what we should do is I'll see if I can get all them valve cover bolts out. And we'll just see if we can take the cover off like that direction. That one went on the floor. I kind of thought yesterday was the day we were dropping stuff. We got it we got a two dayer. So there's some bolts down here on the bottom. Not, I haven't decided yet how I'm getting to those yet. Yeah. Alright, it looks like this next one's really going to be a pain. Maybe I can get it. I need a quarter inch flex socket. Quarter inch drive, 10 millimeter. I have an 8, but I don't have a 10. But I got it. Fetcher out of there. Right, I think there's only two bolts left. I can't be for sure, but that's what I think. And a Riley's has not showed up with my gasket. So. I think we're down to one bolt left. I could be wrong. And then I want to blow this off again. I keep slipping off. Okay. I'm going to go blow that off again because there's some crusties down there. Alright, I'm not sure what we got to do next, but I'm sure there's something. And that is not, not very loose. So there's either more bolts in it or I'm going to have to use a pry bar. I just don't see any more bolts. So I think what I'll do is I'll try to put it in down back down here. I can't get it in there. If there is more bolts, I'm probably in trouble. It feels like there's something, but I don't think there is.
and it's got to be something. I think it's this wiring. Yeah, it is. This stuff is not letting me pull that cover off. It's like the alternator, these little alternator wires. Maybe these. I mean, it's not, it's not really those, but that might help. That's that alternator wire. I'm not sure how to get to it. It's way down there. And then whatever this is bolted to. I can't even get my hand in there. It looks like there's some kind of coolant pipe down there. And it must be bolted to that. And I think we're going to have to get that undone. Alright guys, I had to lift the car up to get that bolt out of the, the wire harness bracket down there. And I think it took me... It took me an hour and a half to get it out. It came out hard all the way. The threads were galled. And the very last uh, half a thread, I was able to screw it out with my fingers. Other than that, my, my fingers are sore. And my arm is tired. And I only gained a little bit. But maybe that's enough. And then I seen that this car is some kind of all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. You know, I hate to say it. But this, this phaser act actuator is going to have to come off here. I don't want to take it off, but I think that's just how it is. I did not order a gasket. So I'll take this ground wire off. I guess I'll just crack a loose and see what happens. It's got some kind of gasket on there. Starting to get some corrosion in there. Yeah, the gasket has to come off. And I don't want to. There it is. It looks like I'll be all right. And I looked at the wires that go down to the alternator, and they do not look very good at all. And the other news is, O'Reilly's has not showed up yet. I think I got it. There's one. Man, that was soft, tough. I think I'm going to pull a plug on this side to see what they look like. The guy said if the plugs looked bad to go ahead and do them. So let me get a socket and see if I can get one of them out of there. Now they must be 5 8 That's not tight. Must have a lot of threads on them. They're an NGK. Yep, I think these plugs are original. Yeah, you won't be able to see it. Alright, I'm gonna order a set of plugs. And I'll be right back and we'll um we'll pull that other side off and then we'll go clean it up and get ready for O'Reilly's, I guess. Alright guys, let's uh let's get this other side out. I did just order some spark plugs and they are kind of expensive. Alright, so we kind of know a little bit what we got to do. And I did order some new holes for that crossover pipe, but I just ordered some 7 16 holes. This side might be a little bit easier. I got a ton of bolts going on. I hope I remember where they all go.
Hopefully I remember where that goes. Still gotta take off the cam phaser or solenoid on this side too. So far the coils look good like there hasn't been any water in there. Alright, I'm going to blow it off. Alright, spools. Better take this actuator off. Solenoid, actuator, whatever. It'll be all right. All right, let's get these valve cover bolts out of there. I'm just gonna cover these with some tape. I don't know if it'll be in the way, probably, or if it even stick on there. Keep at it. Oh, we got some of these things. So I was just squeezing them a little bit. And like that. There we go. So we're moving right along on this side. And I think there's a bolt. That's a little bit harder to get to, but it's right there. Now there's just four bolts on the bottom. This, this was supposed to go up here, I think. Whatever. I got broke loose. It's just at a bad spot to get out here. Right, I think that's out of there. Let me get my magnet. Yeah, it's out. All right, we should be able to get to the rest of them pretty good. I'm going to need to wobble. And then one more right here. I believe that'll be it. So you think I can just grab it and yank it off there? No, I can't. I tried. I think I could if it wasn't for the spark plug tubes, but... Man, that, they just stick right on there. So there's some little bracket up here that's bothering me. This one, it's a pretty big bracket. Hopefully only one bolt holds it.
All right, it's off. That wasn't that easy, but I got it. All right, let's uh, let's get you guys on the camera stand. Let's go over to the parts washer. Let's get this job done. I got I got cars to fix, people to see, and places to go. I don't know if that's the correct order or not, but that's what I got to do. So yeah, you can see all see how wet that bottom is right there. That's oil. All right, guys, uh, let's get these valve covers. Let's get the gaskets on them and. I'm a little bit disappointed because I can't, nobody, they didn't, the, the new gaskets didn't come with these uh, sparkle tube seals, so I went back online and I can't get them anywhere, so I don't know if that's part of the valve cover, are they replaceable, I guess I don't even know, but we're just gonna, we'll put a little grease on them, they'll be fine, they weren't leaking at all, so I'm not too concerned about them, I mean if they were leaking I would have to do something. And then also, we'll need a couple dabs of silicone right in these two corners. So, I'll just tell you right now, we're going to go over the gasket. So, the valve cover gasket I said is a, got, is a Felpro. It's a VS50608R. And that only comes with the valve cover gaskets. I mean, I'm a little bit baffled. Maybe they don't make them. I don't even know. Maybe the car's too old. Alright, so that covers that. I'm happy with the intake gasket set. It seems like we got, we'll have everything we need, even, even the throttle body. Come on, so there's the throttle body gasket. Here's that one top gasket. Here's the other plenum gasket. These two gaskets, I don't know, are they for the exhaust manifold? Or are they for a different car? Or am I just insane and these are on there somewhere? Maybe they are. So it looks like we're in good shape there. And I, I also looked for them, the phaser solenoid actuator gaskets. And you have to buy the, the solenoid to get the gasket. And nobody has those either that I could find. And I don't want to put the whole solenoid on. So I got a piece of 7 16 hose. This is out of work. It's for fuel line or PCV or it also says... EEC, I don't know. This will work just fine. It's 7 16 for this hose right here. And hopefully, I'm not sure if it'll work fine yet because these got bends in them and this one don't, but I think we can make it work. And then I got some spark plugs. These babies are expensive. But the number for those is LFR5AIX 11. Or 4469, and this this should be like an OE, or maybe an OE equivalent, or an upgrade. But NGK Iridium IX. So yeah, I don't I don't know if we can gap these yet, but I think it's 45 thousandths. So sometimes on an Iridium plug or whatever, you can't gap those, or you're not supposed to. You definitely don't want to drop the boxes because some spark plugs, like if you get them from, I think if you get them from Ford, it says right if they've been dropped, you're to send them back or throw them away. All right, let's get these valve cover gaskets in there and get moving. I will have this car done and out of here tonight. But I do have some appointments I have to go to in a little bit. The old gaskets, they, they were shot, so this must be from the other side. Okay, this is looking better now. Okay, the old gaskets were harder as a rock. They are both leaking on the bottom. I don't know if I explained that well enough when I first started the video. And this car's got 167,000 something on it. I never said that either. And then there's a whole bunch of like exhaust shields and catalytic converter shields underneath there that are all rusted away and rattling. So somebody's already put a couple hose clamps on it, but I think we might put a couple on there too. And the thing rattles really bad, like when you're sitting there at a stop sign. 
So I, I want to fi fix that up for them. See, I don't know if I've ever worked on Affinity before. If I have, I don't hardly remember, and it would have been a long time ago. Alright, so this, this cover is ready to go. I think this was the passenger side. So the only sealer you're going to need on these is right on these corners. And you probably don't even need that, but we will put it on there. And I got another car coming in later today, after 5. So I'm not sure we'll have this one done at 5, but he'll just have to wait a little bit. I'm not sure when this car is going to be done. Now that we know what we're doing, I think we got the hard part done, you know. We know what we're doing now. Alright, I think that one's ready, so we can go stick these on, and once they're on, then we can change the spark plugs. And I, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put you guys like this. Alright, so it does look like we need to clean up around the inside a little bit. And usually what I do, unless it's really bad, I'll just put a little brake cleaner on, on a cloth rag like this. And just rub it in there, and that works really good, usually. I'll see how it goes and I'll let you know. Oh yeah, that, that'll work perfect. We want to be careful we don't knock any garbage down into the engine. It'll be okay if you do. It'll be just fine, but try not to if you can help it. So there's a little piece of sealer here, and there's a little piece of sealer on the other side. I might get a little scraper. Did you guys come up with a name for my carbide scraper I made the other day? It's still going. Yeah, there's a big chunk of sealer right here. And I got that off of there, and there's a piece down here. Is the light. And it's hard to get to right down here in this corner, so I'm just going to use this scraper. I need something a little bit thinner. I'm going to go get something. I do have another scraper I made, and it's just a... I don't even know what it was, but it's just a scraper now. Just having a little bit of trouble digging it out of that corner. They used some good sealer. It looks like a gray sealer that they used. Just got it now. There's a lot of dirt up here. I'm being really careful. And then I didn't get it all off of there. It's just really hard to get out of that corner. I think that's where the timing cover might meet. I suppose it doesn't have to be perfect. I think we're pretty close. Alright, maybe a little bit more down here. Alright, that looks good. So I'm going to get some silicone. I'm just going to use some Ultra Black. This is that same tube we've always been using. Just going to use my screwdriver. Just gonna put a little bit in this corner. Doesn't take very much. All right, now I think we're ready. One more thing. Let's clean up these uh, tube seals. And I think 
we could just use some oil, but I got some O-ring lube, so Parker O-lube. I'm just going to use that. So you want to wrap some around here. And we'll do the same on the valve cover. So just put a little on your finger, not very much. We just want a film of it on there. That'll just help us go back on. And I even do that on new seals. Most of the time I'll just use the oil. Alright, now let's snaggle this thing down in there. That's going to be a chore. And that's on there, so now we'll get our bolts. And I got I got two buckets, two piles of bolts. I think I might just have to lay them all out somewhere. Well, the valve cover ones are easy because they're the shoulder ones. I might go stick them in the parts washer a minute. All right, now we can start putting these bolts in. I'm going to get a tool really quick. It's already out here, so I was going to use this magnetic bit. They work pretty good. I, and I got an extension for this. I'm going to go get that. So I don't know where I got this extension, but it's a little flexible one. And it works really good. I don't think it's for automotive, but I use it for automotive. I guess one more thing before we get too far along. I just want to verify that that gasket didn't fall out, so I'm going to go get my mirror and I'm going to look all the way around it. It's in there really nicely. It wouldn't be such a bad thing, that, you know, if you could just set it right on. You would never have to check it, but... I had to snake this thing on. We're having a little bit of trouble. I guess we could have took the air cleaner out. And there it goes again. Alright, I think I'm going to go to plan B. I'm going to use the magnet. Alright, I'm really close now. I got it. Well, I'm really going to have trouble. That's that's three times. Just starting to get a little bit annoyed. So now there's one left. I wonder if I can reach, reach through here. Alright, I got it. So now we're just going to start in the middle in the crisscross pattern and work our way outward, just snugging them up. We'll do the final torque as we go. Probably take three or four passes. I'm not going to bother to look up the torque spec because I'm not going to torque them. You can feel it right there. It kind of stops. That's tight. That one too. So essentially they're bolt down. Yep, that's it. 
So I think the next thing we'll do, we'll leave, leave the spark plugs for last, but the next thing we'll do, we'll work on the uh, phaser actuator solenoids. This thing. So, there is a bunch of corrosion on there that we need to get off. And we got to be careful that we don't get any of it into the little holes. So I think it's a good job for this carbide scraper. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get a little pliers, I'm just going to hold this by the corner. The first thing we better do is figure out which way this goes on, and it goes on like this. So what I'm going to do is I got some Permatex high tech spray gasket, high tech Permatex spray a gasket seal up. I'm just going to give her a light coat. It's looking good. Yeah, my tip was... I lost a tip. I just, this is a tip for a spray paint can. That's good. Let her tack up just a little bit. This is probably not the correct way to use this stuff, but that's what we're going to do. That's what I'm going to do. So then I'm going to put this right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get those three bolts. I'm going to put the bolts in here. I'm going to set that gasket on these three bolts. And now, I'm going to maneuver that and get it back in there very carefully. Just like that. So now we're going to snug that down. Really lightly. Alright, that's the second pass. Let's do one more pass. And that'll do it. Alright, let's go do the other side. So I did go look up some of the torque specs for you guys. So the spark plugs, everything is a wide range on this car. That's why I'm not going to torque anything. But the spark plugs are 15 to 21. And like any of the 6 millimeter bolts, are, uh, they're like, uh, here, let me look. Anywhere from 64 to 112. Some are 87 to 104. Some are 87 to 112. From my experience, when I use the torque wrench on the 6 millimeter bolts, Somewhere over 100, just a little bit. Uh, anything looser than that on a 6mm bolt is uh, too loose. And I worked on a Subaru, we did the water pump, and Mitchell called for, I can't remember, it was like 140 inch pounds on the water pump bolts. That has to be wrong, because there was nothing wrong with the bolts before I torqued them. And I didn't want to torque them, but they at where I worked, everything has to be torqued. So I torqued them. And two of them stripped out, so I had to put Healy coils in. And once the Healy coils were in, then they held. But I think I'd like on a Subaru water pump. Just put them in there until you feel like they're tight. You know. I mean, I know. I hope you know. All right, let's uh, let's get this other valve cover on. And then I'm going to take off for a while, and I'll be back. And no matter what, I'm finishing this car up tonight. So I'm going to set the camera right there. Looks like we got to do some cleanup on this side. Just like we did on the other side. Get this hose up out of the way for now. And that's the one we're going to be replacing. So don't forget. Don't let me forget. Please don't forget. I suppose there's one other thing over here that we should do. Like this hose went through here somewhere I think it just went right through here yeah so I think anybody could do this I've never done one before and I'm doing it so 
I guess you can see what I'm doing. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. I don't want to get too, into too much of torquing bolts, but the things that matter are rod caps, main caps, and head bolts. Timing gears, stuff like that. Valve cover gaskets? No, that don't matter. Just get them tight. I may edit this part out. There's less room on this side, I'm going to tell you that. And sometimes I'll even use, uh, wrap my, wrap a screwdriver around my rag, and then do that that way. There's actually some gunk down here in this one. You know this little carbide scraper, it's not too sharp, and it's not too dull. I made a short video, you should watch it. It's, I think it's kind of cool. Now this side's a lot more difficult in every aspect. I think that I got that piece off in one, one chunk, man. So that, I think that's pretty good. Oh, there's a little piece right here. Alright, now that's off there. There's just a piece up here. That's some good sealer they use. I think I got it. Now I just got to got to get that rag down there and get all the oil off, all the oil residue off. I think I got it. So I'm going to put a little silicone down in them corners and I'm going to use a longer screwdriver. It just takes just a little bit. Alright, I think we're ready. So next, I'll get some some of that O-ring lube. You can use grease or oil. Yeah, we never clean those. These are pretty clean. Probably don't need to be clean any cleaner. But this is just how I do it. I do it on every car the same way. I'll do the same thing here like we did before. Yeah, what is it on the on the Fords? Them ones are hard to get in and out if you change these. Yeah, they kind of suck. I don't know if I'm going to get back in there. I think there's something caught. I should wipe these bolts, wash these bolts with some brake cleaner or something. Yeah, I'll go do that. So let me give you guys a tech tip. Just uh, put your rag over the bolt. Put it into your socket. Rip the rag off. Now I did it. So now we'll be able to sneak it down in there.
All right, got them all started. I lost that little piece. Let's get these snugged down, start in the middle. This one. Now I'll go to this one. I think we'll go ahead and do both these outside ones on the top. I'll go ahead and do both the outside ones at the bottom. To the oh, we got two on the on here. So once you start getting some of them down, you can feel that they'll start getting tight because all it's squishing down the gasket, which is what you want. All right, then two middle ones are tight. It's tight. It's tight. That's tight. All right, there we go. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to see if the gasket was actually didn't fall out. Hopefully it didn't fall out. I don't think you can see it now that it's bolted down. But I'll look anyways. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, the silicone squished out real nice. From what I can see, it's all in there. All right, one more thing before I go on a break. Let's get this all taken care of again. So it's a phaser solenoid. Is that what I've been saying? Solenoid, not actuator. It's a solenoid. So if I said actuator, I didn't mean to. The actuator is probably a mechanical piece, and this piece is the electric, electronic piece. That'll work on that. Man, they gotta make this difficult. It don't look too bad here. just a little bit. I think there's a little bit over here. And this.
I think that's really good. I'll get them three bolts out of here. I'll be ever so careful. It's at 112. Alright, I'm going to take a little break a minute, and then we're going to come back and change the spark plugs and put the rest of it back together. Alright guys, I'm back from doing what I had to do, and I'm ready to change these spark plugs now. So I did check the gap on them, and they're pretty even. I, they look like they're about 45, that's close enough for me, because I, I get anywhere from 44 to 43 to... 50 thousandths is online is what they're supposed to be. I don't think anybody really knows. All right, let's, let's put them in. I think we'll start with the one we got out of there. So I'm not going to put anything on the threads. And the torque on these, I think, is like 15 to 21. And these are the washer ones, so you can feel it. Right, there she hit the washer. There, the washer's crimped down. And I'm gonna, since that one was out, I didn't, I didn't blow it out, but I'm gonna blow out the rest of these. That's loose. That one's really bad. Yep. And I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm just going to say these are the original plugs that are in here. That was loose. They're all loose. Right, there you go. Plugs are changed. All right, now I think we need to get all these little brackets back on. Maybe first, maybe first we'll put the coils in. That sounds like a plan. So what we want to do is we want to put some dielectric grease in there. If I remember right, this one's got to be plugged in. Great. 
right now. Push them down on. And I believe that'll be these three bolts. Alright, those are on. I'm gonna figure out the rest of this. I might have to heat it. That worked. Guys, it's gonna work. That's beautiful. Alright guys, let's let's tidy up this other side a little bit. Alright, let's see if we get these coils in. Well you guys having any bets yet whether she's gonna run when we're done? It doesn't matter. You mix them up. I think this I know this went on there but I don't know where it went. I think it goes like that somehow. This one, I'm not sure. Okay, I think this side is looking pretty good. I think we gotta put the fuel pressure regulator on the other side. still feels okay. So that's all it took is just a little oil.
I just have a funny feeling we're going to have some leftover bolts. I hope not. You know, I'll have to figure out where they go if we do. Put these on. Alright, there's that one. There's that one. That looks good to me. I'll go get the gasket. That okay, must go like that. This line goes over here. Okay, that's looking good. That goes on there like that. This has an arrow on it. That's will tell me which way it goes on. That goes on there like that. And then there was two nuts. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. Tighten them down as even as you can. Don't do what I just did. Okay. Don't forget the ones right here. I think we're looking pretty good. Like we'll need to polish that up where the throttle body goes. Next, we got to get this on and hook up them hoses. Yeah, so that goes right up there. There's one hose. Oh, they're, they're both right over there. All 
I got them hooked up. Now I just gotta find the bolts. I think the long ones go back here, if you know. So short ones in the front, long ones in the back. And all these ones around here are going to be these inch long ones. Little problem here. There we go. So a couple short ones here. This one got this one. Not here. Another not here. This must be a long one. A little short one there. Oh, I see. There's so there's a stub left over somewhere. I think I got all the bolts figured out. Just I got I must have one or two mixed up. Okay, I gotta figure it out. So this one does not go there. So these two are for the cover. The stud goes here. These two nuts are for the cover. Looks like an inverted torque. So let me see if I can find one and we'll tighten that down. Alright guys, uh, the camera shut off on me again, so um, I don't know where I left off or where you stopped watching, but there's only a little bit left, let's let's get her done. So I think I was over here, and then I looked over here, and then, yeah, I don't know. Something goes here. I'm going to blow off down by that dipstick. To me, it doesn't look like anybody's been checking the oil. Um, there's a hose that we got to put on over here. So now, what I want to do is take my ratchet and go around there by hand. And we'll give them the final torque. And if you want to torque them in sequence, that's fine with me. Okay, now I think it's time for the throttle body. I think that's going to have to be clean too. Because she doesn't look very hot. That should work. And I think I might clean it out too a little bit. It's kind of dirty. I think it got it pretty clean. Just get them all started and snugged up a little bit first.
that should do that. Make sure we plug it in. And next, we're ready for the duct work. Well, there's just two screws left. Something has to go there. You know what I'm thinking? You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking it's this thing, and I put it in the wrong spot. That still leaves one more screw, and there's one more thing right here. Oh, that's for the cover. Alright, that still leaves one more screw. It's got to go somewhere. Alright, that's more like it. So I'm thinking it goes over here in this valve cover somewhere. Or it goes over there. I remember taking out one over there. That was kind of hard to get to. Let me just look around for a second. That's right here. So, we didn't forget any screws. I mean, we lost track of where they went. But they put too many screws in there. That's for damn sure. And then I need to come up with an extra screw for that one that had the bad threads underneath. And I'll try to bring you guys along under there when we put that back in. We're definitely going to put it back in. Yep, so we're almost done. So there's only four left in there for the cover. We did it. Whether or not they're all tight, I don't know. No, they are. And the alternator belt was squeaking too, so I wonder if I should try to tighten that out. Right now I don't see how to do it. So this bolt's right underneath this wire loom. That's a good spot to put it, I, I would say. I mean, I couldn't come up with a better spot. Not, not a chance. That's tight. There's one over there I want to check. I don't remember if I tightened this one over here. And I sure did. Okay. I think, I think we're ready to start it up. Yeah, yeah, I think we're ready. I, I am going to pull the dipstick. And that dipstick's in a heck of a spot. No wonder they don't check their oil. I just want to see how much oil is in it. Because the last car we did only had a quart, remember that? You need a damn flashlight to get the dipstick in there. She's a quart low. That's not bad. Maybe they should have put the dipstick underneath the intake. Okay, I do believe we're ready and I'm going to try it. Just got to wipe my hands just a little bit here. And then we're going to lift it up. We're going to put that other bolt in for the wire harness. And then we're going to drop the oil, change the oil. And we want to do that after our running, just in case whatever we knocked into the engine will get washed through, hopefully.
Yeah, she's good. Let me look at them uh, uh, solenoids or the actuators. The phaser solenoids. Yeah, come on, get it right. Yeah, they're good. And somebody put new cooling fans in there. Yeah, they're brand new. It's the whole thing. Wonder where the coolant is. Yeah, she's she's over full. Somebody must have put some in there. I think they put the right stuff in there too because it's red. Let's take the pink. Maybe it's the pink. It's red and pink. What's the difference? Hey, I don't even have to take the air filter out to check it. I can check it right here. And it's in the yellow. Yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. I was going to tell you that it was uh, like 48 degrees outside today. So... What are we, two days away from Christmas now? No snow? I mean, it snowed in October, but it went away right away. Today's 48. I know, I know the farmers need rain. And if we don't get if we don't get a lot of snow or moisture, yeah, that's going to raise your prices for groceries next year. And when grocery prices go up, so does everything else. I'm just going to let it run a while. Um, I'm probably going to shut the camera off, and then when I get ready to go up, i, I got to look for a bull, too. So whenever I get ready to go up, I'll just turn you guys back on. All right, guys, this thing is still running. I'm getting ready to shut it off now. It, it's warmed up. I want to switch these two ground wires. I want to move them downward more. And then we'll, we'll throw on that cover and lift her up and finish her up. This thing, this thing runs like a Swiss watch, man. She's smooth. And hot. I don't know, I just thought they should go down a little bit farther. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it should go like that. See, that's what happens. Alright, I suppose I'll be happy with that. These are the four we have left. All right, let's lift her up, finish it up, and change the oil. Uh, I'll do all the other stuff, check the tires and everything, too. Turn you right here. That should be good. There's something leaking over here. There's gasoline leaking, and it must only leak when it's running. And the guy told me he just put a fuel pump in. Now we better check that out. Hmm. Well, it looks like it's not leaving today, but it's for sure going to go outside. So this bolt we need to put in is way up there. I'm going to try to put it in with uh, my extension. It's going in, but it's really slow. And I have another swivel socket, but I think it's in the pickup. I guess I'm going to get the oil draining. I'm 
about to pick stuff up while I'm waiting too. So yeah. Always a good idea to change the oil if you've had the engine apart a little bit. Wash any shit out. I can't see that, can I? That should be tight. So you gotta wash it. If you got the engine apart, it's always a good idea to flush it out and change the oil. This car needs oil change anyways. This is an awful small filter. Yep, I can get it off. It's got a Napa Gold. I'm I'm gonna put on a Napa Performer. I'll go get the oil filter and I'm gonna fill it up with oil. So I got the Napa Performer. Not too much light for you guys. And I got the Quaker State 5W30 full synthetic. I don't really think this this uh this video is gonna turn out anyways. Uh just nothing seemed to go right today. I'd like to put it out, but and then now I got now I got more stuff to do, so I don't even know. So now I'm gonna shut off and then when I bring it back down, you can watch me put the oil in and the sticker and I'm not gonna go for a test drive tonight, maybe tomorrow. I couldn't get very much oil in this filter. Alright guys, I finally got that bolt in, and I'm going to have to delete a whole bunch of coverage, because I swore for like over half an hour. It was pretty bad. But I got it in. So, we got, I got, got almost everything done here. I forgot to check the diff fluids. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I got all the diff fluids checked. They're all good. Uh, the only thing I can find, um, is, uh, an exhaust clamp is broken in the back. And oh, I did tighten up that alternator belt. I was able to figure that one out. Oh, and, and some of the tires are bad. Uh, there's a hole in the floor underneath the driver's seat. Oh, and not not nothing too serious. So. I'm ready to put it down. We can put the oil in it, put the sticker on it, and uh, be done with the show. So I'm going down. I am going to leave it on the hoist until I'm done figuring out what's wrong with the gas tank, why it's leaking. I'm going to, after we get done with this, that's what I'm going to do. It's leaking gas. So it says on Mitchell that the th this thing holds 5 quarts, so, and 5.30, and I'm putting full synthetic in it. So I just assume I can dump this whole thing in there, and I'm going to be good. Well, let, let's see what the stick says. Yeah, it's right at the full, so when I start it up, it's going to go a little down. It'll be alright. So when your oil warms up, it's at the full. Alright, I'm going to start it up. I'm going to put the oil change sticker on. 
yeah, whatever. And then I'm going to reset the oil life. And then I'm going to shut it off and come back out here. Alright guys, so that's that's how you do the valve cover gaskets on a 2006 Infiniti G35. So, that was quite the experience, and I've been working on this car all day. It's now 10 o'clock. When did we start? 10 o'clock in the morning. Now it's 10 o'clock at night. I did take a couple hours here off here and there, so... But anyway, so... Uh, yeah, we got it. There's no leak, so... Uh, it's all running, uh... I'm going to have to take the back seat out and see what's up with the fuel pump. Maybe it's leaking out of there. I, I, I'll i have to diagnose that a little bit. But other than that, I don't know if this is a do-it-yourself job. Maybe. So you watch me do it. If you want to do it, then it is. So, alright. I, I hope you guys uh, learned something. And hope I can help you out. Or hope this video helps, helps somebody. Um, yeah. Yeah, I hope this video helps somebody. And, uh. And you guys have a great day, and it's going to be Christmas in two days, so I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and, and uh, you can catch me next time. See you later.